what cryptocurrency is really this idea of a decentralized network that you can verify value transfers and ownership globally instantly without any intermediary you know is it is it has tremendous potential and it and it actually um, highlights how broken the legacy system has been so you know you've heard some examples of how long it takes just to transfer between your own accounts at a bank you know you've had news articles come out talking about how you know when you send money from one point you know from one country to another it's hopping through different bank networks and you're not everyone's taking a little slice everyone's converting but you don't quite know what happens on the other end and it takes days and there's no need for those kinds of inefficiencies in the system you know um, we can send an email across the internet instantly today we, could, we should be able to do the same with our own money I think it's a very elegant technical computer science oriented solution to a problem that doesn't exist do we need a current? Do, do we need something called money that we can use so I can go and buy a bagel without having to find something that the bagel shop owner wants to trade with me? Absolutely. We have that technology. It's called the US dollar. And so really what we have is a competition between two technologies. The US dollar managed by Janet Yellen, Bitcoin uh, managed by a computer algorithm. And if you think about what's going to help one technology beat the other, what are some things that you're going to want? You're going to want that the technology that's most widely accepted, this is a network good, currently that's the US dollar. You're going to want one, you're going to want to hold your wealth in a currency that's stable. Currently the US dollar is remarkably stable and um, Bitcoin is not. All the wrong you can do with um, traditional currencies, traditional financial services you can do with cryptocurrencies and some of them uh, work a little faster, are a little bit better for, for criminal behavior. But to a great extent, money laundering, the drug laws, et cetera, et cetera, are, are doing more harm than good. Um, those laws are causing more problems than they're solving. Well, I think the rise of cryptocurrencies is a political challenge. And in, in this kind of democracy, I think that's extremely healthy. Um, I'm not worried about the competition. I think people should recognize that it is a very political debate we're entering into. The problem is you have everyone has a different concept of privacy so some people hear privacy and they hear anarchist anonymity and some people hear privacy and they realize okay this is actually really important to preserve privacy because the network is really transparent so depending on what your framework is of how the network works is it transparent is it anonymous you know your reaction to how that network should be you know modified to address public policy concerns will be very different well partly it's the crisis of 2007-2008 and the the way that the money and, and, and credit led to that crisis and came under pressure subsequently so that led to a lot of dissatisfaction. There's various alternative currencies that have been established and Bitcoin has managed to get some, some traction and managed to get some, some powerful backers from the venture community. So attention is now uh, focused on this and, and we start to have competition between alternative business models and between these new cryptocurrencies and the existing monetary system. Sometimes a new product arises because everyone really, really wants a, a smartphone that will fit in their pocket, for instance. Um, it turns out that most of us are pretty happy with our wallets stuffed with probably not quite enough US dollars um, using that. Um, so it's a, it's a technological innovation. The question is whether it's an innovation for which there's any market demand. Um, so, you know, why, does it, why did it come about now? Um, one part of the answer to that is there was some difficult computer science problems that were solved in, in putting this together. But just because you solve a problem, a, a technical problem, doesn't mean you solve a real world problem. Um, and I think there's also a, a real sense of um, libertarian zeal around some issues. The idea that the U.S. government runs anything, um, including our monetary system, um, some people find uh, just too hard to bear. Um, and so they want to set up a competitor. Um, in some sense, they have, and we'll see how that competition works out. Bitcoin was released, I think, we can only guess, with that in mind, that people were going to be looking for something better. Uh, it could be something better, or at least something that makes things a little safer by giving people an outlet to a different to a different money, to different forms of financial services. It's essentially competition uh, to a number of different existing societal infrastructures, and competition is good. Even if Bitcoin fails, it will strengthen the existing financial systems and monetary system. I don't give uh, investment advice for a good reason. I think people should look at um, the full range of investment opportunities available to them, and they should be very careful about things they don't understand. So always try to understand fully what you're going into, and on that basis, look at your options that are you know, very, very broad these days.
You know, I make it a policy to never give investment advice because I, I, I don't even trust myself with that. I think that there will be enough time if another paradigm comes in to take Bitcoin's place. Um, I think that you know, if Bitcoin is a fraction, does, does a fraction of what we think it can do, um, one Bitcoin will probably be worth a lot someday. That being said, I wouldn't tell my mom to put her life savings in it right now. And um, you know, personally, I have made you know, I, I hold Bitcoin, but um, you know, it's not something that that I um, you know hold on for for retirement purposes or anything like that. People should move their fun money into bit, into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. It is fun to to hang on to, to understand how it works, to pretend to invest in, but hold only the amount that you're willing to lose. Uh, and that's that's where we are now in the in the cryptocurrency realm. Is is it's not mature enough that you should rely on any cryptocurrency as an investment uh, of any significance in your portfolio. Thank you.